Please be advised that there are minor spoilers for Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition in this video. Tales of Vesperia, one of the Holy Trinity and what some fans of the series consider to be the best Tales of title. And that opinion was made mightily clear to me when I was trying to decide what game I should try out between Dragon Quest XI and this. I will always stand Vesperia. Tales of Vesperia, let's freaking go! Vesperia, easy. Vesperia is one of the best Tales games. Vesperia for sure. DQ11 is charming for sure, but its story and gameplay fall short in comparison. Wow. With praise like that, how could I not get excited? And even though I haven't played many Tales of games, only Vesperia and Symphonia, I did have a good time with both of them. And some people did tell me that Vesperia was somewhat of an evolution of what made Symphonia so good in the first place. So if I had a good experience with Symphonia, then it was a shoe in that I was going to have a good time with Vesperia as well. Right? The game begins in the lower quarter of the capital city, where we're introduced to the ragtag duo of Rapide and Yuri. Now, let's start this off positively with Yuri himself, who is without doubt one of the freshest takes I've seen on a main character in a very long time. The doggo is cool as well. Yuri is far removed from what you normally expect to see from a protagonist. Many times they're flawed, green around the gills, and slowly grow during the course of their adventure. That's not the case with Yuri, he's someone who is quick to action, who's not afraid to do things himself, and as real credit to him, his persona made me reevaluate what I consider to be a good character. Normally I place a large amount of importance upon development, how has the character changed from the start of the journey to the end? And though I still consider that to be a key factor in judging a character's quality, Yuri doesn't really change over the course of Vesperia, but I'd say that works in his favour. He's already quite far removed from what you normally expect to see, and that makes the perspective he gives fresh. He doesn't really need to change, and I'd say Vesperia sells him well. As for the other characters, they're a mixed bag. I had a good time with some of them, while others felt more cookie-cutter generic in nature, but even they weren't detrimental to the group. Outside of Yuri, I'd say they range from average to good, and there's some neat twists in there as well for some of their arcs. On top of that, in typical Tales of fashion, you have skits sprinkled throughout the game, which add even more to their development. Now, I wouldn't say they're the best I've ever seen, the presentation is very simple in of itself, but a fair amount of them are humorous and add a bit more to the events you've seen or are yet to see. I have to confess, though, that there were a bit too many for my liking. What would frequently happen is that you would witness a cutscene which would then immediately be followed by a skit, and then maybe five minutes later you would get more of the same. They are optional for sure, but would you rather watch it then and there, or have this prompt goading you for the next couple of hours? After a bit more Yuri goodness, he gets arrested, but is quickly able to escape with the assistance of a fellow inmate. It's not long before he bumps into Esteliz, or Estelle for short. Nice and they make their way out of the city to embark on their journey. Soon after this, you are given control on the overmap of Vesperia. So, my first gripe comes up here. I wasn't a fan of the overmap in Symphonia, and that also translates over to Vesperia as well. One thing I do want to give it credit for, though, is that it illustrates the scale of the world. Vesperia's overmap is huge and gives you a real sense of wanderlust but the size itself also presents a problem as it just feels barren. There's very little to find on it outside of some material nodes, and it simply functions as a means of moving from point A to point B. And even if you choose to enter a different landmark outside of your main objective, you're likely going to be soft-locked from progressing until you meet the milestone required in the story itself. However, I will say take this with a pinch of salt, as I am aware that there is a bunch of side content in this game. Though, finding this content is a challenge in of itself, as the windows by which you can access them are stringently gated, and they're sometimes in areas that you wouldn't think to look. Meaning that if you want to find all of it in a suitable time, you're most likely going to need a walkthrough. I personally never use a guide on my first run, I'll be damned if I get spoiled on a big reveal as I scan it over. But if I had used a walkthrough and got seriously stuck into the side content, maybe this vast world would have felt more alive and I could appreciate it more. That being said, 
the overmap was not something I looked back on as a defining feature of my overall experience with Vesperia. I wasn't a fan of it, but it didn't leave a sour taste either. Now as you venture around this vast world, it's inevitable that you're going to bump into some beasties to beat around. And Vesperia is no different there, you'll be doing a lot of fighting utilising what is possibly the best name for a combat system I have ever heard. The Evolved Flex Range Linear Motion Battle System. Did someone pass out on their keyboard when they came up with this? In all seriousness though, the battle system employed by Vesperia is pretty good, and I'm middling in its praise because it does take a while to fully bloom, maybe a bit too long for some players. You start off basic with simple combos, guarding and base arts, but eventually you'll start to unlock more options like arcane arts, altered arts, mystic arts, burst arts, overlimits and fatal strikes. You'll also find out about more advanced abilities like manual cancelling which assists in your combo chains. And the game realises this is a lot to take on, so it purposely drip feeds you the new mechanics over time, which I definitely feel was the right approach here. In terms of player input, you'll be given active control of one character, and the remaining three members will be subject to the discretion of AI. Which is... Is that why you're running into a wall? Fine. On top of that, you're free to try out all the other characters as well, who have notably unique playstyles, though. I personally just stuck with Yuri for the most part, as I had a lot more fun chaining together combos with him. In addition, each character has a certain number of skill points, and you can customise your character as you see fit with active or passive abilities that will either allow you to chain certain art groups together or even give you the chance to learn new talents. And that is a notable strength of Vesperia's combat, there's a large degree of customization available. The player is encouraged to experiment and mix up their skill sets to find a style that suits them, and it adds a degree of tactical input for certain boss fights as well, trying to figure out what skills will be the most useful to counteract the more deadly attacks. All in all, though it took a bit of time to get used to, I did have a positive experience with Vesperia's combat, and there's no doubt it becomes very satisfying later on if you are able to grasp all the tools available to you. So you're probably listening and thinking, well, there's a few hiccups here and there, but it sounds like it's nearly all positive, so what's the problem? Oh, trust me, we're getting to that right now. You see, when it comes to a JRPG, my overall experience with a game is defined by four factors, and working from the bottom up, this is where they rank in terms of importance for me personally. At the bottom of the pyramid is gameplay and graphics. I've never really cared much about graphics, they don't define a top tier experience, and honestly, as long as the gameplay is competent, that's more than enough for me. Next tier up is soundtrack quality, which is decent in Vesperia. Not the greatest I've heard, but it has some decent songs in there. After that are the characters, which we've already touched on, and finally at the top is the umbrella of story, which encompasses factors like narrative quality, pacing, dialogue, execution, and themes explored. I want to make something very clear here. I tried to like Vesperia's story. I looked for key moments in the plot that I could hook onto and get lost in, and though it admittedly starts well, the adventure just did not grip me. At all. And I have four reasons why which we'll go over individually. Firstly, the themes explored. As said before, Vesperia starts off very well because it presents a very interesting theme right near the start. I don't want to say what that theme is because I want to keep this as spoiler free as possible, but it was engrossing and was illustrated well by two of the characters. If Vesperia kept down this route, I have no doubt I would have enjoyed its story far more. But for some ludicrous reason, this theme is abandoned a third of the way through, and then you never hear about it again. And it gets substituted for... Honestly, I don't even know. And once this was abandoned, the other three problems started to become more apparent to me, which leads me on to my second point. The dialogue is painful at times. I'm not saying that every line spouted is god-awful, but there is a notable number on display here, ranging from repetition to roundabout ways of saying nothing. But I want to give you an example, the most egregious instance of what I'm talking about. Don't worry, I will keep this vague. So, after a certain scene, the excellent Yuri is talking to another character, and he says something along the lines of, If the poison is running through the body, you cut it off at the source. I'm gonna be more decisive from here on. And this line alone is good, because it is Yuri through and through, I expect him to say something like this. 
However, about 10 minutes later when the group are gathered around their objective and talking, the being that is talking to them pretty much says exactly the same thing, only for Yuri himself to retort, What makes you so high and mighty? Which one is it, man? And there's the issue. Moments like this scene that are meant to be impactful strike flat because of this type of dialogue. It just falls woefully short of where it should be. Which leads me on to my third point. The execution of the big moments is almost non-existent. I say almost because every now and then you will get an animated scene for some of the bigger events, and they are great. They match what the scene is attempting to evoke in terms of emotion. I wanted more of those for the big moments, like say, the reveal of the main antagonist. I mean, they would definitely give us an animated scene for that, right? No. What you actually get is something far less inspired, and bear in mind this was the only thing that was keeping me engaged at this point. The captivating theme that I had talked about earlier was long gone, and I was desperately clinging to the cliff edge, glancing over the face to try and find a glimmer of salvation for this story, and the only thing I had left was the puppet master behind everything. This is how it plays out, and I'm giving it to you as I remember it. The characters are walking around in cutscene for about 10 seconds, Straight off the overmap, by the way, the bad guy appears off screen, announces he is the bad guy, says he's doing bad guy things, and off he goes. There's your next objective. I can't begin to describe to you how disillusioned I was by this point. And I know what some people will say, this game's over a decade old, you can't expect it to be excellent in terms of presentation. Not an argument as far as I'm concerned. Chrono Trigger, Skies of Arcadia, Trails in the Sky, Final Fantasy VI, Lost Odyssey, all of them either coming out before or around the same time as Vesperia, and they deliver their stories light years better. Whereas they feel coherent and link expertly from plot point to plot point, Vesperia felt more like a cluster of contrivances. Events were popping up out of nowhere, and I was apparently meant to care about them. And therein lies the biggest weakness of Vesperia's story, and my final point. It is aimless. It has no flow or rhythm to it once that initial theme is abandoned. Heck, even the characters themselves admit that there's no direction at times. About halfway through, one of the party members says that they want to find out more about themselves, and the group supports them in their endeavour. But in the next town, this same character then decides they want to do something else, at which point another member of the group reminds them, No, we're doing this right now. And this happens like three times in a very short period. And even though they decide to veer off their main objective anyway because forget urgency, it just so happens that this detour coincidentally ties in with their original goal anyway. I've heard of character-driven narrative and trust me, it can work, but in Vesperia it felt like the characters were choosing what to do and the world was just moulding around their wishes. And don't even get me started on that final act. The amount of deus ex machina blastier drivel that they use as a plot element to drive those final moments along is dizzying. Yep. Not for me. It's a shame. A real shame. And I know I sound like I'm being very harsh here and you're probably thinking that I hate Tales of Vesperia. The truth is, I don't hate the game but I had such high hopes for it. This was one of the titles on my backlog that I was looking forward to, a game that I was expecting to easily be in my top 5 games that I played in 2021. I wanted to like it, damn it I tried to enjoy my time with it. But by the final act I just accepted that Tales of Vesperia was not for me. The lofty level I set for the game was ultimately its downfall. But maybe that's something that I need to learn from as well, not to be so expectant of a game that I've yet to play, and kind of disregarding as much as possible the opinions surrounding it. However, despite my bad experience with Vesperia, it doesn't mean that I'm giving up on the Tales of series altogether. I've still got a couple of games on the backlog that I am really looking forward to playing. Oh please be good. 